Hi all. In the last video, we learned about the central dogma, the path of information flow that takes us from DNA information to protein production. We saw that it is a two-step process. The first step is transcription, reading DNA and making RNA. The second step, translation, involves the use of RNAs to make proteins. We saw that there are many kinds of RNAs produced by transcription. Three of those are rRNAs, tRNAs, and mRNAs. Continuing with the analogy of chromosomes being cookbooks and genes being recipes within those cookbooks, ribosomes made of rRNAs and proteins are like the kitchens where the recipes are cooked. Like actual kitchens, they aren't the ingredients or the products. Ribosomes pr provide the facilities and some of the cooking tools to cook the recipes tRNAs or transfer RNAs are like chef's helpers. They bring the amino acid ingredient to the ribosomal kitchens. Each tRNA carries around one and only one type of amino acid. tRNAs also read parts of the recipes, but each tRNA is capable of reading only one to maybe three or four words. Imagine a chef's helper in a restaurant who carries around an egg. That's it. Not bacon, not flour, not sugar, not two eggs, just one egg. And imagine that this chef's helper can only read three words, E-G-G, E-G-E, -E, and E-H-G. If chef's helper sees any of these words, he'll deliver his egg and then go back to the egg pantry to pick up another egg. If chef's, chef's helper doesn't see any of these words, he goes to other kitchens to see if he can find his words. That's like tRNAs. They read one up to a few words. If they find their word, they deliver their amino acid. If they don't find their word, they move on to another ribosome. And then there are mRNAs, messenger RNAs. These are the recipes to make proteins. As we'll see, they are like genetic sentences, sequences of words. Each mRNA word is three nucleotides long and is called a codon. Let's see how these parts work together to build a protein. In step seven of this picture at the bottom, we see an mRNA in green font that was transcribed from the black DNA strand. That mRNA is transported out of the nucleus, if this is a eukaryotic cell, and into the cytoplasm. As soon as the mRNA enters the cytoplasm, a small ribosomal subunit binds to the five prime end. The small ribosomal subunit then moves down the mRNA in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. When the first AUG is reached, the small ribosomal subunit stops there. In this configuration, the AUG codon of the mRNA is on display. We call the first AUG the START codon. It's like the capital letter that marks the beginning of a sentence tRNA chef's helpers wander by to check it out. Only one chef's helper sticks there, though. That chef's helper has a three nucleotide sequence, its anticodon, that is complementary to the AUG codon. Remember, complementary pairs stick to one another through hydrogen bonding, so this tRNA will stick to the AUG codon. That tRNA chef's helper carries the amino acid methionine or MET. We know this tRNA carries the amino acid ingredient MET by reading the chart in the lower left corner of this picture. That chart is called the Universal Genetic Code. It is the Dictionary of Genetics. The sets of three capital letters are all of the possible three nucleotide codons of mRNA. The sets of letters with lowercase font are abbreviations for amino acids the ingredients to make proteins. When a biologist talks about the genetic code, it is this dictionary she or he is talking about. Other people might use the phrase the genetic code to describe genetic structures or processes more broadly. Don't listen to these people because they're showing that they don't really know what they're talking about. That chart is the genetic code. It is called the universal genetic code because every organism that we've studied uses this same dictionary. Let's see more examples of how that dictionary is used. 
When the first tRNA binds to the start codon, a large ribosomal subunit binds around it. The large ribosomal subunit has two pockets that are perfect size and shape for tRNAs to fit in. The tRNA met fits into the first pocket. The second pocket is empty, and it sits right under the next three nucleotides, the next codon of the mRNA. The next codon is CCC. What happens next? Well, tRNAs wander in and out of that empty pocket. One of them has the right anticodon to stick there. Using the genetic code, we can see that the box in the second row and second column has codons that start CC and then anything. These codons code for the amino acid proline. Remember that the point of all of this is to produce a protein, a chain of amino acids. In this next step, MET binds to PRO. This is the beginning of protein production. When MET binds to PRO, the MET tRNA lets go and falls out of the ribosome. That tRNA will go to the methionine pantry to pick up another ingredient. Meanwhile, the second tRNA is now carrying PRO-MET. The ribosome, small and large subunits moving together, now moves down the mRNA so that the tRNA is in the first pocket. Notice that tRNA hasn't moved. It's still bound to the codon CCC. The second pocket is now empty and sitting under the next codon, UUU. What happens next? Well, if you said that a tRNA carrying the amino acid PHE, or phenylalanine, fits into the empty pocket, you're right. What happens next? PRO binds to PHE to make a 3-amino acid protein. The tRNA in the first pocket lets go and falls out, falls out. And then what happens? The ribosome moves down so that the tRNA carrying PHE PRO MET is in the first pocket. The second pocket is empty, sitting under the mRNA codon UCA. What happens next? And then after that? And then after that? I'll just click through. When the ribosome reaches a stop codon, UAA, UAG, or UGA, a release factor binds into the empty pocket. This signals the whole system to fall apart. We're left with the newly produced protein. For this mRNA, the protein produced has the primary structure or amino acid sequence, SER, PHE, PRO, MET. That protein will fold into very specific structure and will perform a very specific function. Transcription, then translation. The central dogma. These are the basic processes that all cells use to convert genetic information into protein. In the last two videos, we'll focus on some variations that can occur on these basic processes.